Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to solve some problems involving the rational zero theorem. So we're going to find rational zeros. All right, let's take care of a couple practice problems. So <clears throat> as part of my uh, class process, typically what I do is I have them solve for more than one value. So what I'm going to ask you to do here is to list the sum of possible rational zeros of the function. Remember that the rational zero theorem states that the possible zeros are equal to the factors of the constant divided by the factors of the coefficient. We know the constant value is going to be that value that never changes. It's going to be negative 24. And the factors of the leading coefficient are the coefficient in front of the term with the highest degree exponent, which in this case is going to be just 1. So the factors of the constant are going to be plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. And the factors of the leading coefficient are going to be 1. So in order to solve this, I have plus or minus 1. I'm going to have, well, now you see that the coefficient for the leading term is 1. It really becomes irrelevant because the factors over, factors of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient just end up being the factors of the constant. Because anything over 1 is still just that number. 4 over 1 is still 4. 3 over 1 is still 3. 2 over 1 is still 2. 1 over 1 is still 1. So the factors of the leading coefficient when the leading coefficient is 1, uh, the possible zeros when the leading coefficient is 1 are just the factors of the constant. All right, so I'm going to add plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 6, 8 12, and 24. And I, if I list the sum, you can see that everything cancels out. So I have plus or minus 1, that equals 0. Plus or minus 2, that equals 0. So the answer to this question is really somewhat of a trick question. It's actually just 0. Okay, list the sum of the possible ra positive rational zeros of the function. Now I think this time we'll just list <clears throat> the possible positive uh, rational zeros of the function. Well, I say positive here so we get a positive result, but let's just list all of the rational zeros for the function. So I have the factors of the constant, plus or minus, and the, my constant is 12, plus or minus <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 over the factors of the leading coefficient, which would be plus or minus 1 and 3. So my possible rational zeros are going to be plus or minus plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2 thirds, plus or minus 3, uh, I would say 3 thirds, but that's equal to 1, we already have that here, plus or minus 4 thirds, and plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 6 thirds, which is 2, which we already have, uh, plus or minus 12 thirds, which is 4, and we already have that, and plus or minus 12. So these are the possible rational zeros of this given polynomial based on the rational zero theorem. All right, moving on to another problem. When you use a rational zero theorem to determine which of the following values are zeros of the function. All right, well, uh, let's take a look at the possible zero. So I have negative 10. I'm sorry, the uh, possible, uh, I'm sorry, the factors of the constant are going to be plus or minus 1, 2, 5, and 10. And the possible, uh, excuse me, the factors of the leading coefficient are going to be plus or minus 1 and 2. So the possible rational zeros are going to be the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient. We have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, uh, plus or minus 2, we have plus or minus 2 over 2, which is 1, plus or minus 5 over 1, which is plus or minus 5, plus or minus 5 halves, uh, plus or minus 10, and plus or minus 10 over 2, which is 5, plus or minus 5, which we already have. So let's go back and let's set up our synthetic division system and do some guessing and checking to see which one of these works out. Now we're supposed to determine which of the following values are zeros of the function. 
Well, we know that 3 is not a possible rational 0, and negative 3 is not 1. So we have to find out if 1 or negative 1 is a possible rational 0. So we've listed all the possible rational zeros. Now we're going to check uh, 1 and negative 1 to see if they are actual zeros. So I write in uh, my first, the coefficient for the first term, which is 2, then negative 9, then positive 8, then positive 9, then negative 10. And let's try 1 as a 0 first. So I bring the 2 down. 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 9 uh, plus 2 is negative 7. 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. 1 times 1 is 1. 9 plus 1 is 10. 1 times 10 is 10. And so when I have a 0, which is my last value here, this is my remainder, I know that 1 happens to be a root or a zero of the function, and a factor then would be x minus 1. So I'm just going to put that here, and we also need to check negative 1 as well. So let's erase all of this, because that's part of the question, uh, checking both plus or minus 1, plus or minus negative 3. Again, we know that plus or minus uh, negative 3 is not part of the list of rational zeros. So let's test negative 1 here. So I have 2. 2 plus 0 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 9 plus negative 2 is negative 11. Negative 1 times negative 11 is 11. 11 plus 8 is 19. Looks like we're going in the wrong direction here. Uh, maybe not. Negative 1 times 19 is negative 19. Uh, plus 9 times, I'm sorry, plus 9 minus 19 gives us negative 10. Minus 1 times minus 10 gives us 10. And we have another 0. All right, so I know then, uh, using synthetic division, testing out both 1 and negative 1 as zeros or roots, I know that both of them are going to be roots or zeros of the function. And I know that I have at least two factors, x minus 1 and x plus 1. OK, moving on to the second to last question. We want to find the rational zeros of the function. Now, this really incorporates a lot of different aspects of what we're trying to accomplish. So the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to find the factors of the constant and we're going to divide them by the factors of the leading coefficient. Now we can see the leading coefficient here is just going to be 1 so I'm just left with the possible zeros as the factors of the constant. right? Because anything over 1 is just itself. I have plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. All right. So those are my possible zeros. Then I consult the graph. And I say, what we're trying to find actually is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So where the value of y is equal to 0. That's what we're trying to find, the zeros, meaning where y is equal to 0, where the graph crosses the x-axis. So I can guess here that this looks like a positive 4. So let's set up our synthetic uh, division system. And I'm going to choose 4 as my first possible 0. Uh, and I'm going to set up my system here. I have 1 as a coefficient for x cubed, 1 as a coefficient for x squared, negative 14 for the coefficient for x, and negative 24 is my constant. 1 plus 0 is 0. 1 times 4 is 4. Uh, 1 plus 4 is uh, 5. Four, plus, 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 14 plus 20 is positive 6. 4 times 6 is 24. And I am finished, and I know that 4 is a 0, and x minus 4 is going to be a factor. Now, there are a couple things we can do here. When I have a 0 here, that's my remainder. This value is my constant. Always the next term into the left is my constant. This value here is plus 5x, so it goes x constant x, x squared, x cubed. So I know this value is x squared. Well. What I can do here is I can say to myself, I can just factor this particular uh, quadratic and get the remaining zeros. Or I can um, go back through the synthetic division system. So let's do both. Since we're here, and uh, synthetic division is a fun process, and also factoring quadratics is fun. So I'm going to do this both ways. I can see x squared plus 5x plus 6 factors to x plus 2 times x plus 3. 
and you can figure that out if you use your diamond in box process as well. So my the balance of my roots are going to be uh, negative 2 and negative 3. So I have 4, negative 2, negative 3. I would write x is equal to uh, 4, negative 2, negative 3 is my result. And this polynomial factors to x minus 4 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. So that's one way. Once you get uh, the synthetic division system down to four values, uh, including a zero at the end, it leaves you with a quadratic function and you can just factor from there. So let's go back in and just do the synthetic process again using minus two and minus three. We'll just use one of them. Uh, in the interest of time. And we'll see that that value of negative two, we'll use negative two, will bring us a zero at the end of our synthetic division system. So one plus zero is one, negative two times one is negative two, one plus negative two is negative one, negative two times negative one is two, negative 14 plus two is negative 12, Negative 2 times negative 12 is 24, and there we go. Negative 24 plus 24 is 0, and I'm left with <clears throat> my quadratic, x squared, minus x minus 12. Okay, last question. Find the rational zeros of the function. Now, this is a rather lengthy uh, process sometimes, and a lot of it involves guess and check. So I'm going to list the possible zeros first. I have plus or minus 1, 2, uh, 5, and 10. So I only have 8. I have 8 factors possible. I'm sorry, 8 possible roots. So we're going to start uh, with the pluses we'll go through, and then the minuses we'll go through the list as well. Let's write uh, 1 here. I have my coefficient for x to the fourth is 1, and negative 5 for x to the third, and plus 7. 3 and negative 10. So we'll try 1 first. I have 1, bring the 1 down. <clears throat> uh, times 1 is 1. I have negative 4 here. 1 times negative 4 is 4. Excuse me, negative 4. Leaves me with 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 1 times 6 is 6. And we're left with negative 4 as a value. So let's just make sure that we did that right. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 here leaves me with 3 as uh, the sum. Bring the 3 here. Add 3 to 3, I get 6. Okay, so I'm right. 1 is not going to work out. So plus 1, we'll put in this column here. Plus 1 does not work out. So I take these out. And then let's try positive 2. So I have 2 here. 1, 1, 2 negative 3, negative 6, 1, 2, 5. This one looks like it's going to work out. 2 times 5 is going to be negative, I'm sorry, it's 10. I add these together, I get 0. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the coefficients to 1, negative 3, 1, and 5. 1, negative 3, 1, and 5. So I know that plus 2, I'll put that up here, plus 2 is going to work. I have a factor of x uh, minus 2, and 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 3, 1, 5, because this represents uh, uh, x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 5, and you see that I've uh, factored out an x minus 2, so I'm left with this value. Any other factors would also work in the system as I try them. So let's try uh, 2 again to see if that works because that's a possible, it's possible uh, that 2 works more than once in this case. So I have 1, 1, 2 times 2 is 2, uh, and let's just make sure that I did this right. Did I have any negative values? I had a negative 3. I thought there was something wrong there. So I have 1, negative 3, 1, and 5. So let's erase this again. 1, negative 3, 1, and 5. That would have been a disaster if we had not caught that. Okay, so again you have to be very careful when you're going through this process. It's very easy to make mistakes, as I just did. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. I have negative 1 here. Uh, negative 2 here that leaves me with 3, so that's not going to work out. So 2 is now off the board. Let's go back to, let's go to 5. Let's see if that works out. So 
I have one, one, five times one is five. I have two here. Uh, five times two is 10, 11. That's not gonna work out, 55. Okay, so five is off the board. Now let's try 10. So in the interest of time, I tried 10 for you. It didn't work. Now we're moving on to negative one. Uh, one here, negative one, negative four, four, five, negative five, and this becomes a zero. All right, so I have also negative one as a root, and now I'm down to my quadratic. So I am just gonna finish this off by factoring this quadratic. And I can see that this will factor to x minus five times x plus one. All right, <clears throat> so five should have worked out as we work through that process. I'm not sure why it didn't. So x minus, oh, excuse me. Well, in fact, the this is not gonna work out uh, to have uh, any more real rational uh, zeros. We're left with two imaginary zeros. And the reason why I know that is at this point, I can check the discriminant to see if the discriminant is negative. Uh, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is going to be 16 uh, minus 4 times 1 times 5 gives me negative 4. So my discriminant is going to be negative. I'm going to have two imaginary roots and two real roots uh, as part of the solution. So uh, we're going to skip finding the other two roots but it is possible uh, once you have uh, factored this as much as you can, you've gone through the list of possible uh, zeros and you've tried them all and only two work. It is possible once you get down to this quadratic form to do the, to check with the quadratic formula and the discriminant to see if the discriminant is negative. And if it's negative, you know you have at least two imaginary zeros for this function. That's what we have in this case. So I have the factors x minus two, x plus one, and then I have two other imaginary roots.